Thanks everyone for uh, coming out and I'll try to make this as quick as I can, uh, get everyone to refreshments as soon as possible. Uh, so my name is Matt Trescott, I'm a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about big data, uh, big data how um, customers like Arc, how many other customers are using the cloud to ingest large amounts of data so they can process it in meaningful ways to find out interesting things about their users, their customers, their employees, uh, any number of things. So uh, typically the slide deck is about 40 slides, I cut it down to about 18, uh, so uh, hopefully we'll have some good stuff. Uh, if you do have a question, please just um, shout it out. I like more of an interactive um, style of presentation. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, screws along. So uh, this is kind of the life cycle of big data, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, so we're looking at how do we generate data? What are some of the places we get data from? I think there's been a lot of talk here. Uh, you can probably clearly see mobile devices, websites, documents, uh, GPS, all kinds of different things where you're getting data from. And then that data is actually meaningful to you in some way. A lot of people use that data. They chunk through that data and they look at it to find patterns, to find things that maybe they should be doing that they're not doing. And so how are we going to do that in a, in a quick um, way that we can actually find that data and it doesn't take us years to do it. Um, so generation, collecting, what are we going to do? How are we going to pull that data in? Where do we put it? That's very important. Uh, analytics and computation, how do we analyze that data? And then finally, how do we share it? Where does it end up? And so we're going to walk through some of the tools that we have available. Uh, generally, the tools um, are going to be if you're going to uh, maybe come in, create your own product, you're looking at developing a solution for the industry, and we have the tool set in the cloud that you can use uh, to make that happen. And many, many, many people do that now. So uh, unconstrained data growth. So if we look at this, uh, anyone know how big like a gigabyte of data is? Like what's a gigabyte of data file maybe? Probably like your average movie, like on Netflix maybe. It's about a gig of data. Uh, uh, we don't even have to do megabytes because it's just not big enough anymore, apparently. Uh, and then we have terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, and zettabytes, uh, if you want to know what those mean. Uh, and essentially, uh, this was about 2012. Uh, there's about 1.2 zettabytes of data in the digital universe. That's what we call unstructured. Uh, unstructured data is just data that could be GPS coordinates, they could be clicks on a website, they could be uh, any number, IOT is another very uh, happening industry that we see a lot of. Uh, IOT is the internet of things. Uh, that's where we start to see more connected homes. Uh, you can start to see things like the connected job site. Uh, for example, if you were gonna dr fly a drone around your construction site on a daily basis, where does that data get ingested to? Um, and so these are all things that contribute to this large amounts of data that we now are ingesting on a, you know, just a second by second basis. So, uh, and a lot of this just is data that no one looks at. Uh, you might have it now. Uh, so, use cases for big data. What do you want to look at? Uh, customer segmentation. So, what are my customers doing? What are they, what are they going to be doing? Uh, marketing spend and optimization. So, am I spending money on the right things? Uh, financial modeling and forecasting. What will I be spending money on in the future? Did it make sense for me to spend this on in the past? Uh, unfortunately, number four there is ad targeting uh, and real-time bidding. You know, we probably all see enough ads stuffed into our face on a daily basis, but uh, a lot of people uh, use it for that particular use case. Uh, click stream analysis, again, this is very much for that e-commerce style website. Why did your customers leave at this point? Um, you know, for the industry that you're in, maybe, you know, as you start to track more and more devices in the Internet of Things, you know, why was this piece of equipment left here for this amount of time, why did it move outside of its area, all kinds of different analysis that you could do. And last but not least, of course, fraud detection. Uh, this is a big portion, especially a big portion on Amazon.com. We use a lot of this technology in-house to make sure that fraud uh, and you know, nefarious acts don't happen on our website. All right, so metrics. Uh, so metrics um, are the things that are coming in that you're going to want to look at. Uh, visits, views, clicks, source device, 
you know, things that are interesting probably to you would be uh, location, uptime, uh, the time, the latency it took for something to happen. Um, of course, like shares and friends, that probably depends. Pricing, frequency of something that's occurring, right? And all this data gets ingested uh, very quickly. Um, and, and these are all things that we're going to want to look at and maybe analyze later. Uh, sources. So where does this stuff come from? Uh, web servers, mobile phones. Again, I didn't have the IoT slide on here. Uh, the Internet of Things, I think, is very interesting. If you look at somebody like a Nest Labs, you know, where they have that dial when you turn your thermostat. Do you think they look at that every time you change that thing up and down? Oh, yeah. They totally do. So every time you click that thing, a little piece of data goes out to the Internet, and it gets stored somewhere. They'll look at it right away, possibly, but they're going to look at it later and find out, you know, what trends you're doing in your home. So. As we see this more and more, more and more devices are going to start connecting to the internet and they're going to start sending these little bits of data up there and you can use them in any way you see fit. Uh, mobile phones, tablets, I think um, you know, our previous presenter showed uh, all the different things that you can do with your tablets and your phone. You know, all that data gets sent up someplace and uh, they generate lots and lots of data. Uh, and again, third party feeds. You know, maybe not as interesting, but if you want to, Twitter has something called the fire hose. You can actually look at all the tweets made on Twitter um, and ingest that, and people do run crazy metrics about those types of feeds. Uh, format, again, what type of data are we bringing in? Structured data would generally be something that would be your uh, user base that would be in a database. Uh, it's created by you. You know what the structure of the data is going to be because you defined it. Unstructured might be data that's just generated by log files, by devices, and they might be in text format, uh, binary format. You might want to look at those in real time or in batch mode. Real time or near real time means that you're looking at that data as it comes in and trying to um, create a, a dashboard with that data. You're trying to alert on that data. Maybe there's a piece of it that you want to see if an error occurs, you know, if something does something unusual. And then batch data is generally how most people are looking at data um, when we consider big data because there is so much of it. They generally crunch all the numbers down very quickly with lots and lots of machines. Uh, so then they can get the output of that. Uh, and then we pump that into reporting, dashboards, maybe sentiment data. Uh, clustering, these group of people did this. Uh, machine learning, which is a very unique, fun thing um, that's coming up. Uh, we see that a lot. Uh, we have a new machine learning platform. Uh, even other cloud providers have some very uh, cool machine learning stuff out there. Not to be confused, that's not AI. Right? It's not the Terminator. Um, this is where you actually look at a, um, a, a piece of data, and it learns from that data, and it can see trends at that, as that data moves forward. So maybe you want to predict the weather for tomorrow, or you want to find out if this piece of equipment is going to fail. Those are all things that machine learning can do for you. And of course, how to optimize. So you're going to look at this data and find out ways that you can optimize what you're doing now. No? All right. Uh, and so generally, this is what we see. We see this gap of data. When you start ingesting it, you have a product. You're taking in all these clicks. You're taking in all this location data. You're taking in all this what we call metadata, just about any possible um, person, thing that's out there that's communicating with the internet or the cloud in general. Uh, and so what you have available for analysis generally doesn't meet the amount of data that you're pulling in. Uh, and really that comes down to a couple things. Traditionally, we used hardware for that. You had to go buy hardware. Um, and those took a long time for you to get that hardware. Generally, how long does it take if you need a new server? Does anyone know if you were going to go buy one? A couple months? If you're going to get one from a PO? A few months? So what, what we're doing and what we're going to talk about in a few minutes, does anyone know how long it takes to get a virtual server on the cloud? Yeah, a couple minutes. Anyone know how it takes to get 100 or 1,000? Also a couple minutes. So big data, right, is removing those constraints. Um, and using the cloud is using the elastic and highly scalable nature of the cloud with no upfront capital expense. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Pay as you use. So you pay for only those servers that you spin up. And they're available on demand. So it's available when you need it. So the idea is, is you don't have to run 100 servers all the time if you only need those 100 servers for four hours. You can spin them up, chunk through your data, and spin them back down again. So what we're doing by using the cloud in a big data way, we're accelerating this process here. So this life cycle of big data 
becomes much faster. We can use it in more interesting ways. Uh, so technologies and techniques for working, with, uh, working productively with data at any scale is what big data is, right? Or what we consider big data is. Uh, we also call it the three Vs. Has anyone ever heard of that about big data? So it's velocity, volume, and variability. Uh, and that's what you're dealing with. And when you can take all those three Vs and use that information uh, at scale in a productively way, you can probably have some big data. All right. So why would you want to use AWS for that? And why do people use the cloud for that? Primarily, lower cost is one. You can get started very quickly. You need a, basically a credit card. Uh, and you pay for what you use. So if you have one server uh, versus 100 servers, you pay for those by the hour. And when you no longer need them, you can spin them down uh, and shut them off, and you're no longer charged for that. It's a very common use case when it comes to chunking through these huge amounts of vast data. I have customers with petabytes of data. They spin up hundreds, sometimes 200, 300 node clusters at a time. They chunk through the data for the day. They spit out the results the way that they want them, and then they shut them down again, and they only paid for you know, four hours of time. So it's much easier to pay for, uh, or it's much lower of a cost to pay for those 100 servers for four hours than keeping on 10 servers you know, for days and days and days to chunk through that data. So ease of use, programmable. So we have an API for all of our services, which means that you can tie in all of the code that you natively use. So if you have developers that use .NET, they use Python, they use Java, any of those really common languages, we have an SDK that they can integrate with, and they can actually create their own scripts to spin these up on demand. So they can make one API call and get you know, virtually as much infrastructure as they want, which is good and bad. You do have to watch them a little bit. Um, but, and they do exist, integrate with existing tools that you might have kicking around. A lot of the CI integration tools that you might have. Probably we also have some big data tools that we have as far as data warehousing that'll tie in with your BI tools from a Tableau or a Pentaho or a, a number of those analytics reporting tools that we have. Zero administration in that we uh, actually administer the data centers for you. You don't have to go in, you don't configure switches, you don't buy the boxes, you don't have to set it up. It's simply a click of the button or an API call and you can get the servers that you want. We handle the networking, uh, we handle resiliency in a lot of cases, we handle backups depending on the services that you choose. So you can be as resilient as you want or you can, um, you can actually fly by the seat of your pants on some cases if you want to as well. Uh, and generally very easy to configure. Uh, so this is the, uh, you know, the product side. We have to throw it in there. Uh, so I won't go too deep uh, into each one of these. Uh, generally, our, our biggest and most popular uh, service is Amazon S3. It stands for Simple Storage Service. Very clever. Uh, and essentially what that is is it's object storage. And this is a petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte scale storage. Uh, Customers, many of my customers have hundreds of petabytes stored on S3, uh, which they either use for big data, they might serve it out to other people. Uh, and one of the main features of S3 is that it's very resilient. Uh, if you put an object, like say you put a picture in S3 or a log file, we actually copy that log file to three different locations in a given region. And what that does is it gives us about um, uh, seven nines of durability, which means we generally lose an object every billion years or so. Uh, and then we have a couple other ones, Kinesis, which is our ingestion engine. So if you want to you know, have that feed where you can start pumping lots of data, uh, DynamoDB is a NoSQL solution. Uh, I think the biggest one that, that we find most customers are using in our fastest growing service is called Redshift. Uh, that is your data warehousing service. We actually use it internally for Amazon.com. We call it drinking our own champagne. Um, and what it is is it's a petabyte scale data warehousing that just uh, ties into all of your typical BI tools. It has a SQL interface. Um, so if you're using something like a Vertica or a Netiza or something from Oracle, this would be an alternative for that. It adheres to the same thing that all the other cloud products do. Pay as you go, pay by the hour. Um, you can spin it up, you can spin it down if you're not using it. And then at the end here, we have Elastic MapReduce or EMR. Uh, EMR is our, uh, our managed Hadoop. Hadoop is kind of a cornerstone of the big data world. Uh, if you get into it, everyone's going to talk about it. It's essentially a way for you to spin up these massive clusters and chunk through data. And what we do there is we just provide a lot of that administration uh, for you. So we spin up the clusters for you. Uh, we make it a very easy to use interface so you don't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. 
And of course, we're here to help. Uh, we have solutions architects like myself. Uh, so if you are a customer, you're on the cloud, uh, we generally will bring in solutions architects. They're free, which is kind of nice. Uh, we'll work with you, you know, walk through your problem, help you set up uh, whatever it is you want to set up on the cloud. Uh, we're very good at it. Uh, professional services, if you'd like to have us actually build it for you, we do have a team that's in-house uh, that you can pay for and they'll come in and actually build that for you. We have our own support, so if you need that support, something's on fire, uh, you can call us up and get that done. Uh, and then we also have a large ecosystem of partners who will happily work with you um, to build whatever product you want. Uh, we have a lot of them, they're all on our website. And of course, uh, the uh, architecture, this is, this is very <clears throat> sort of uh, generic ingestion. So the idea here is we're pulling in lots and lots of files. Uh, we can ingest those either into these virtual servers, uh, which we call EC2, which is our elastic cloud compute. Um, and then you could also store those in S3 for long-term durability. So just a basic architecture uh, example. We actually have lots of these on our website. They look pretty. I don't know who made them up, but they won't tell us who. Um, and so there's lots of them out there for big data, for ingestion of all kinds, basic web servers, all kinds of stuff that you want. And really, that's it. I didn't want to overwhelm anyone, uh, but I want to give you a sort of an overview of all the stuff that big data can do for you. Uh, so hopefully, you got some stuff out of it. I'll be hanging out for a little bit if you want to ask some questions. So thank you very much.